Welcome back to Invest Global. Last week on Tuesday at Davos, we heard Saudi Arabia announce that they are open to trade in things other than US dollars. Now, this is a massive deal if you don't understand the petrodollar system and the euro dollar system. I've made videos on this previously, but essentially, the petrodollar system was set in, into agreements between the US and Saudi Arabia in 1945 that they would sell their oil in US dollars. Now, this is really boomed when it comes to US dollars demand internationally. We've seen the euro dollar system, which is essentially all non-domestic US dollars, so international US dollars circulating around the world, typically just in a digital format on a digital ledger, um, but also physical bills outside of the US. That is the euro dollar system. This has really increased the demand because of the petrodollar system, which basically says, you know, all countries around the world have to settle trade in oil in US dollars. So let's say Russia and Turkey are trading back and forth with oil. Turkey's buying oil from Russia. Well, Turkey has to swap lira, their currency, for US dollars, then send it to Russia, then Russia's swapping dollars back to ruble or whatever they're doing from there. But it just creates kind of a, a big issue for these countries. They just want to do bilateral trade agreements. Um, we're seeing a lot of this in Central Asia when, when you look at bilateral trade agreements between Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. I've done videos on this in the past and I'll cover this more moving forward, but essentially what you want to understand is if this is a possibility, if countries can settle their trade in things outside of US dollars, this drastically reduces the demand for US dollars internationally, right? The Euro dollar system, which is all built on this necessary use case of settling trade when it comes to oil, when it comes to a lot of other things in US dollars. And this all ties in with BRICS, the SCO, all these different international alliances really seeing the shift from west to east when it comes to international trade, how the world is going to be run over the next decade. So very interesting to track. One of the things I wanted to throw in there, the previous video I made on um, Russia and Iran coming together, potentially issuing a stable coin backed by gold. They talked about this very recently. This all ties in very, very well because what we're looking at is what is going to be the next petrodollar system. You know, a lot of people say the, the petro yuan, right? There's a lot of issues with this. So I think finding a middle ground where you can go, okay, we can figure on one asset, one resource like gold, but add some modern technology. So add in blockchain technology, settle trade in this way. I think it's a great idea. However, I think there's going to be a ton of pushback. There's going to be a lot more weaponizing of the dollar. Um, we're going to see this play out really over these next few years. But I think this year we'll see a lot of things, a lot of trends happening and a lot of opportunities for those who are able to understand the narrative, how things are shifting, how the masses kind of react to this. Um, most people don't even know what the petrodollar system is or the euro dollar system. So congratulations to you for at least understanding it a little bit better, following in on these things. And um, yeah, so basically kind of to wrap it all together, I personally see it as if the demand for these euro dollars really goes down because of this, you know, the petrodollar system is kind of dissolving. People are able to settle trade with bilateral agreements outside of the US dollar. There's going to be creating a ton, a ton of decreased demand um, with those dollars. Then those international dollars are going to go back to US shores causing a bit of hyperinflation in my personal opinion. We could see that play out. Now there's a lot of different factors, but that's just one scenario. So what can you do about it? Well, at the end of the day, it's up to you. This is not financial advice, just educational purposes. But I think having hedges in an inflation, very, very high inflation situation is very important. But it's also important that you understand both sides of the arguments, right? So if you understand the inflation side, potential hyperinflation, you should also understand the dollar milkshake theory, which I'll talk about. Brent Johnson, Santiago Capital talks a lot about it, but I'll probably be doing a video on that very soon. Um, so understand a lot of these things, have inflation hedge assets, so have things in gold, silver, land, um, things that are very, very important. Uh, I also personally hold cryptocurrency, commodities, different things like this, but that's basically all for this video. Hope you understand a little bit more about the petrodollar system, the yuan, and what Saudi Arabia is now doing.